stalemate of World War One. This machine gun was the number one factor leading to the stalemate, but certain, certainly not the only factor. Barbed wire was also a factor in that, and the repeating rifle was also a factor in that. Sometimes when the machine gun nests were taken out, there were still enough guys with repeating rifles to hold off the enemy. Also, another problem with uh, the reason for the stalemate was uh, the advance in technology and quick communications. Now you had radios and you could run wires for phones for quick communication between the chain of command for moving troops. So this was another factor also, not only quick communication, but quick transportation. You could uh, quickly move troops by truck from one position to another. So if there was a breakout in one place, it was very easy to quickly relocate troops to the point of the breakout in order to stop it or even push it back. Also, the airplane was another factor. Air reconnaissance meant that you had a bird's eye view of the battlefield. So the element of surprise was very difficult. There was a case in World War I where uh, an Allied plane spotted the Germans trying to sneak a division up to the front lines. And what happened was uh, once they spotted the airplane, the airplane fell across the division, and the division withdrew. So one airplane could cause an entire division to retreat. You know, plus, I mean, another factor was, you know, the trenches, there were rows of trenches. So if you took you know, the front trenches, there was some more rows with more guys behind them. So taking the front row on a, on a group of enemy trenches, you know, what was the tactical advantage of that, well, basically little to none. A lot of times they would let more troops come in to the front row of trenches and hammer them with artillery and mortars. I mean, those trenches were already zeroed in. So uh, a lot of times an enemy who took the front row of trenches would retreat, you know, before they were even pushed out by the enemy because they knew it was an unsustainable position. You know, and attacking became, in World War One. attacking became much more difficult than defense. So attacking became an exercise in futility. You know, it was said in the American Civil War, they came in the same old way, and we defeated them in the same old way. And that was kind of what was going on in World War One. It wasn't until the development of the tank that you really saw the line start 